Today, we're gonna to be installing a digital multimeter onto our battery box so that way we can determine how many amps this motor is pulling when under load, when not under load, and how much power we actually have left in our battery. So stay tuned so that way I can show you how I installed this into our box. The kit consists of the meter with display, a power wire, a transformer with the short wire, as well as a long wire for the transformer if needed. But we're just going to be using the short wire for the transformer on this installation, as well as some instructions. The tools needed for this project are some wire strippers and crimpers, 14 millimeter wrench, and a box knife. All right, guys, so the first thing you want to do is determine where you want to place your multimeter display at. I ended up cutting it out right here. At first, I was going to put it here, but after looking, the positive cable was on this side here, so I ended up placing it here. And what I did is I just mocked it up like that and started cutting with, scored it with my uh, box knife here. After I removed it, I just simply cut it out. This plastic is pretty soft. I was going to use a Dremel to cut it out, but there's really no need for it. All you need is this box knife. And once you score it a couple of times, it just pops right out. So after cutting it out, simply just pop it in like that. And it, it's, it's pretty good. You see here. It's, it's pretty good. So now that we got this cut out and installed, now we can start hooking up everything. We're gonna slide the battery right into the box. So let's put this battery right into here. All right. Next thing we're gonna do is get the power lead and our transformer. So with the power lead, what I did is I connected the red and the yellow together to a positive red cable and then just your black to a ground. I extended the leads because they, they stopped right about here which is a little bit too short for the battery. So I added about, I don't know, we're gonna add just about, about six to eight inches or so. so. I'm gonna cut some of this excess off here. And that should be plenty enough for our battery. As you can see there, that's plenty. So now let's strip these back. What we're going to do is we're going to add some 3H 3/8 ring terminals so that we will connect it to the battery securely and we don't have no problems with this. Get a couple of these terminals out. Crimp these on there with the crimping tool. Now that we got these uh, crimped on, we can install it onto the battery, as well as our terminals for the uh, Nakoda motor. So with the positive and the positive together, oops. So now that we got those terminals, we can install it. First thing we're gonna do is hook up the ground cable with the ground. And you see the negative on the battery terminal there. And then the next thing we're gonna do is get the positive cable and slide on our transformer. If you look closely here onto the, on the transformer, there's actually an arrow pointing in that direction, which means the flow of current is going to be going that way. So we're gonna actually add the battery terminal in this direction so the current from the battery is going towards the motor. So we'll add the transformer there as well as a positive cable for the meter. 
there. And with 14 millimeters, we're just gonna secure the terminals. Now that we have all this hooked up, we got the positive hooked up, the ground hooked up, we could plug our meter in. Just uh, positive to positive, negative to negative, and then just slap it all in there. Just plug it in there. Now that we got the positive hooked up, we can hook up our ohm meter or our transformer. So that way it can start reading that, okay? Now we could just close this all up. You'll notice as soon as it powers up there that it's flashing and I will get to that right in a second. So let's just make sure this is all secured nicely. I wanna make sure it's all nice and, nice and secured, just like that. Good. So now we're gonna strap this strap on there. And I've always found this to be a pain in the butt. Now that it's strapped and secured, everything should be tight. And our oil box is all tied up. We got the meter plugged in just like that. You'll see it's fluctuating on one amp right there. And let me show you how this works. All right guys, so now that we got it wired up, you'll notice the unit powers up automatically, okay? By hitting this lower button here, the backlight will cut on. You'll see that the amps is fluctuating a little bit. To clear that out, hold this button down for three seconds and let go. You'll notice it clear out, okay? So real simple, hold it down for three seconds and let go and you'll notice it clears okay same thing for the amp hours you can hold this down for three seconds and it's going to clear you see so it cleared it went back to 109 amp hours with the full battery so once you got your battery fully charged and everything is installed the battery must be fully charged so that way you can hit this reset button and the meter is going to reset for a full battery but before that you need to set it up so by hitting this top button one time, it's gonna go into your first program mode. Well, you notice it says AH for amp hour, 109.0, which is 109 amp hour battery, which I programmed, which I programmed it earlier. So simply, once ever it's flashing on that, you'll just hit this button and you could change the value of that number, which we're gonna leave that one at zero and then it automatically goes to the next one. You'll change that to whatever battery that you have, whether it be 100 amp hour, which that would be 100 amp hour, 50 amp hours, 80 amp hours, or in this case, 109 amp hours, which this is your first digit, second, third, and then point zero. Once you do that, you have to hold this button down until it flashes. Just like that, flashes three times which means that it has been programmed. You can also set this meter up for low voltage alarm and overcharge high voltage alarm, which in this case, we're not gonna be doing that today. We're just gonna be programming it to 109 amp hours. Right now, the battery is fully charged at 12.9 volts. It also has a watt hour, a watt, and then your amp, which is the one I'm really interested in because I wanna know how many amps is this motor pull? Let's hook this up into the kayak and uh, let's give it a test and see how it works. Now that we got the battery installed on the kayak, we got it plugged in here. You got to make sure the motor's plugged in here. Okay. Now once I engage this motor. Engaged. the motor engage and look you see the meter changed now with the motor engaged it's putting 0.3 amps or 3.8 watts okay so if I disconnect the key here you see it goes down to zero once I engage it there you go okay 
So now we're going to start the, the Minn Kota motor and we're going to see how many amps it pulls. Alright guys, so now we're showing 0.3 amps just with the, the motor engaged. 12.8 volts, you see it dropped a little bit, still pulling it a little bit. So now let's put the motor on one speed and let's see what it starts to pull. Now the motor's running and you notice it increased by 0.8 or 0.5 I should say so now it's showing 0.8 so let's increase the motor to 2 speed now prop speed is set at number 2 and it's pulling 1.1 amp or 1 amp now with the meter we have more knowledge of what this encoder motor is pulling at what time so when we're on the water I'm actually going to record this so that way I can determine how much battery life we actually have so let's go ahead and set this to number 5 and see how many amps it's going to pull Right now it's set at 5 and it pulls 2 amps, 12.7 volts, 25.4 watts. So let's go on ahead and juice it all the way up to number 10 and see how much amps it pulls at full blast. That's at 10. It pulls 4 amps at 10, which makes sense because it pulls, it pulls um, 2 amps at 5. Let me decrease this because I don't want to sit here and run the engine at full blast without it being any water or anything. And it works great. It's actually working pretty good. So let me go ahead and dis disengage all this. We'll cut off the motors. Showing 0.3 amps. Now if I disconnect the uh, if I disconnect the key here, you notice I took the key out. Look, it gets back down to zero amps. Okay, now let me put the key back in back to three amps it is hot guys i gotta get out of here i hope this helped you out please leave me a thumbs up uh be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this i'm definitely going to be posting more videos on the old town autopilot showing some little tricks and tips that i'm doing on here to make this a better kayak for me and i hope this helps you so that way you can have a better experience with your kayak as well um, like I said, I'm going to leave a description and the link below. You can click on it right here. It should be showing on how I adjusted the seat so that when my dry box no longer hits the seat here, which was kind of annoying. So you may want to check out that video. Then I'm going to take this kayak out on the water, give it some testing. I want to see exactly how many amps it's pulling whenever I'm out on the water with current and stuff like that, guys. So be sure to like, follow, subscribe, so that way you can see the future videos and see how this meter is working out. Plus, I want to see how long this meter even lasts on the water. I am a saltwater fisherman, and I don't know how long it's going to last out there. It isn't waterproof, but it is under the seat. I did put it onto my, my battery box here so that way it could be be somewhat um secured down there um but let's see how how long it lasts guys i'm going to leave a description in the link below to this meter so that way if you want to read more about it or if you want to purchase it yourself you could just follow the link on the bottom